We tested 20 bikes priced between £2,800 and £3,650 as part of the 2019 Trail Bike of the Year test. One of those bikes was the Cannondale Habit Carbon 3, which comes in at £3,300. The Carbon 3 has a ballistic carbon front triangle and then a regular alloy rear triangle and this helps give the bike a reasonably rounded weight of 14.1 kilos in a size large. Some of the bikes in Trail Bike of the Year have travel figures that kind of belie what the bike's really all about, but 130 at the back, 130 at the front makes this a true trail bike and that was definitely reflected in the character of this bike. With a whole new frame coming out from Cannondale, they could have gone slightly more radical with the geometry one might think. The Habit 3 is pretty regular in its sizing. Size large has a 460mm reach, there's a 66 degree head angle, a 74.5 degree seat angle and a 38mm BB drop. So nothing particularly out of the ordinary there. Out back you get a 435mm chainstay, so it is relatively well balanced with that 460mm front end. The bike rolls on a pair of Formula Hubs with Stan's arch rims and a pair of Maxxis tyres. Up front there's a 2.5 inch wide trail Maxxis Minion which is a real nice front tyre to see on a bike like this. Pushing the bike forward is a largely SRAM GX Eagle drivetrain, however cheekily they put an NX Eagle cassette in there so you lose a 10 to 50 tooth range and you get an 11 to 50 instead. Now this wouldn't be an issue but if you do want to upgrade to a wider range cassette in the future you will have to get a new free hub. Rounding out the drivetrain package is a trivative stylo crank with a 30 tooth ring and that's reasonably small for a trail bike but does help on those longer climbs. Stopping the bike is a pair of SRAM guide R brakes with 180mm rotors front and rear. Finishing off the kit is a largely Cannondale C3 branded finishing kit so that's bar, stem, you also get their low down dropper post as well. Dropper post comes with size specific drops as well which is a nice touch so the small bikes get a 100mm drop Mediums get 125 and then large and extra large get a 150mm drop dropper. Sat on the top of this is a fabric scoop saddle which tends to be pretty popular amongst most testers. Cannondale have plugged a 130mm Fox 34 into the front of the bike and in many ways this along with the 130mm at back almost defines what the habit is like as a bike. There are other bikes in Trail Bike of the Year with 130mm of travel at the back which have plugged in a Fox 36 up front. Cannondale haven't gone down that route sticking with that Fox 34 and it gives the bike a real fun, agile character. In our final testing in Finale de Gura it perhaps felt a little bit undergunned on some of the chunkier, faster, rockier trails so if you are looking for a bike to do those with maybe the Cannondale isn't for you. However, in the UK when we were testing the bike what stood out about the Cannondale was that it was just a whole heap of fun. On flowy woodsy trails where you're nipping between trees or popping over roots, there's bags of character. It's got a real nice planted feel but it doesn't feel too sort of bogged down in its travel and in its size. Therefore if you're looking for a bike that's just there for pure fun, the Habit could well be a good option. The suspension on the back of the bike is relatively neutral, it doesn't throw up any particular surprises as you'd expect from a traditional 4 bar linkage system. It climbs reasonably well, if you're going to really mash on the pedals yet yeah, you'll get a bit of bob out the back end but there is a lock out there for smoother climbs or if you are going to go and do that. But stay seated, it pedals pretty nicely up most climbs. We did find that the 74.5 degree seat angle isn't super steep and if you had a slightly steep one in there it would put your hips nicely over the pedals but it's not a huge criticism at this point. While it didn't necessarily feel 100% at home on the rockier trails out in Italy, the Habit did benefit from having that 2.5 inch wide trail Maxxis Minion up front and that did give a little bit extra security when things got a bit gnarlier. So if you are going to have a bike as an all-rounder and you do occasionally want to hit things like the bike parks or those tougher trails, the Habit will survive there. Maybe just put a bit more air in the fork and keep it a bit more propped up. It will be okay, it's just not the bike we would necessarily choose if you're going to try and do that all the time. At £3,300, the Habit Carbon 3 isn't the best value bike in the world. However, don't forget two things. One, you do get that carbon front triangle which many bikes at this price point don't get. 
You can also buy this bike from a proper bricks and mortar shop relatively close to where you live or ride. And this means that if you have any issues, you should be able to pop straight back in and get them sorted relatively quickly without worrying about posting it anywhere. And also you should be able to get a decent demo on the trails that you regularly ride. So the Habit didn't blow us away with any radical performance advantage over other similarly spec bikes. But what it did do was affirm to us that trail bikes are just loads of fun. And the Habit really is a true trail bike, rather than a trail bike dressing itself up as an Enduro bike, for example. If you just want to get out to the woods, pull some skids, do some jumps, whatever it is, the Habit is a really good option. And that's why it made it into the top ranks of Trail Bike of the Year. So is the Habit going to be in your shortlist next time you're buying a new trail bike? Let us know in the comments. And in the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe.